Hello and welcome to another Unreal Engine tutorial. Today we're going to do a button. A very simple button that you can use just about anywhere. But it doesn't use animations. It's done entirely in blueprints and it's uh, contained entirely within the actor itself. So to start off, we're going to need the first person template which I've already started and we're going to go to first person blueprints and well first person blueprint directory and then we're going to create a couple of things so we're going to start with a blueprint class actor which we're going to name button and then what we will need is we need a interface which we should be using anyway because this makes it so much easier I always call them STD for standard and I can copy them amongst different different projects so we'll quickly go into that and we're going to create a very quick very quick simple function called push I can't think of anything else to call it. So push, and that's it. That's all we need to do in here. So save that, compile it, close. Next thing we're going to need is we're going to need something to be able to trigger this thing with. And the easiest way to do it is with a line trace coming off the tick. And I've done a whole tutorial on this, but through the magic of editing, we're just going to pop it down. So there we go, there is our line trace. Very, very simple line trace, very crude. It'll give us exactly what we need to trigger this button. Uh, what we also do need to do is, coming off the click event, now I'm not going to set up an input because we don't need to, because we've got the, uh, we're just going to take it off the mouse right click. Sorry, the mouse left click. Mouse left button. I'm going to take the out hit result. I'm going to expand it. Now, in practice, something I've found lately is that you look for the... You need to test to see if the... Um, You need to test to see if the actor actually does implement the interface that you're doing. It, it's just easier and better, and you really should. So what we're going to do, do a branch off that. Does implement interface node. And you select your interface that you want to test for, and it comes off the out hit actor value. Now, if it doesn't implement it, it'll simply return false. And we can test this by printing on the screen. Not implemented. Okay. In the case it is implemented though, we want to execute push. Which is the function we made in the interface before in our standard interface so push so that's all done there so what we now need to do is we need to go back out we need to go to our button actor and we need to make the button really quickly we're going to make it just a simple button nothing too special so we're going to add two cubes Okay, we're going to call one of them body, 
And the other one, button bit. So the bit that goes up and down and yeah. Okay, now we're going to have to scale this because this just gets ridiculously big. Like it's it's a giant cube. So we're going to scale the body bit down to 0.2. This makes it a very manageable size in the game and pretty reasonable. It's still big enough if you click on it and everything. So that's all good. And then the button bit, we're going to make a 0.15. This is so small, it's sort of like very interesting to click on. Then what we're going to do is we're going to raise it up just a little bit. So at 5, it looks like that. So let's just change the color a little bit by changing material. Um, you would actually use the same material for both and then just use the custom data settings to change the color. And that way you're only drawing one material for the same for the actor, not to. So it helps keep with you keep your draw, your draw car, your draw um, figures down. Okay, so with this one, we're going to go this, the projectile one, because it's just a different colour. And there's our button. Very, very simple. It's only five above thing, so this is very easy to manage. Okay, so we're going to go into our class settings. We're going to add the interface that we need to use, which is under the interfaces section. I'm going to save and compile that. It's just a habit to get into event graph. Now here's where the fun begins. Now we will need the tick event. We'll also need to go over here to interfaces, implement push. So this event will fire when this happens, this bit here. So what we want to do is we want to, when we execute this function, we want the button to go down. So the easiest way to do this in this case is to make it the same z-axis position as the body. So it'll just sit at the same height or below it. It'll, it'll look like the button's being pushed down. So what we want is we want to do a set relative location. We actually need to get the button bit first. Which we'll put up there. We'll also need the body because we've got to get its location. So get relative location. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set the relative location of this. So far this is very simple. That's it. So, on that, and let's go see what it looks like. When it's not up in the air. Just drag it back down to earth a little bit. Let's put it on the floor. Okay, just to demonstrate how usable this thing is, we're going to do two buttons. Because we're going to do it later anyway. So simulate a button, say, on a wall. Okay, 
So we're going to go and hit our buttons. When we push them in, the buttons should just... There you go. They're now pushed. Because they don't come back out because we haven't done the code for it yet. So we're going to go back to button. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the tick enabled. So at this point, we're going to turn the tick enabled back on. Well, it's going to be on anyway. And what that's going to do is it's going to start this part off. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the relative location of this. So we only need the z-axis mainly, but and then what we're going to do is we're going to set the relative location. But we're going to make a small change. We'll expand these two, split. We don't want the X and Y to change, so we're going to put them there. Just going to plug them straight in. But what we are going to do, because we want the button to come back up again from relative to where it is, we want to add something to the Z axis, because we recently set it to the same as the body. So what we want to do is we want to just add one for now. This is all subject to a bit of tuning as how you want your button to behave. Some people might want it to just be instant and that's it. So we'll connect that up and our button should just keep going because it's going to. So what we now want to do is we want to look, we want to only do this so many times. Now we can use a for loop, but it's better to use a counting variable. So we're just going to be original and call it count. Get an integer. Down here, we're going to set it to zero. So it resets every time. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring it up here, get count, and just for now, we'll say five. So we want it to move it up five times because we've... When the window shows up, hang on, there it is. We've moved it. The location here is 5 relative to... Yeah. We may have to move it more, but we'll see. We probably will because of the scaling. Because the button disappears. It actually disappears inside. So event graph. So what we want to do now is we want to do a branch. Of this. Now, if this... If the count is greater than 5, we want to turn off the tick. Easy. If it hasn't if it hasn't got to five, we want to increment. And this will increment it by one. One whole value of one. So that should pretty much be it. We compile, save. And when we touch our buttons, they should just bounce back out. There you go. Now initially you saw them, they were sticking out a lot further than where they are, a bit like that. Um, this is where the tuning comes in. We can change it to 10. For example, if you want buttons that look a little weirder. I like five, that's perfectly fine. Um, you can stop it by setting this initially to the same value. So they should be performing quite well now. So, there you go. Um, there is that bit where they disappear, so we can make them a bit more realistic like buttons. Just a little bit of tuning. 
let's change the scale a little bit so it's the same height as the cube as the body now oh, that's much better look at that and you can really abuse that button but that button is incredibly lightweight there's while it's not doing anything while you're not actually interacting with it it's not the tick cycle's not actually running and yeah you can do a fair bit with it and you can have quite a few of them And it won't really affect your performance, particularly if you do things like uh, do the you know, set the materials up properly, uh, properly. So yeah, now we've got a grid of buttons, all of them working independently. And they're all very lightweight and you can change that to a cylinder you can make it you can make those to a cylinder you can do quite a bit to it okay so thanks for watching like what you see subscribe that would be good and yeah there'll be another part where i'll take the button and turn it into something actually useful so you to trigger a door or trigger something else that happens